I'm Graham Jessmer here at Renewable Energy World North America in Las Vegas. I'm joined now by John McKinsey from uh, Stoll Reeves. We're going to talk a little bit today about the stimulus package that was passed last month in the United States and uh, what impact that might have on the renewable energy market. John, how are you today? Good, how are you, Graham? So, to start out, there, there were $67 billion in the stimulus package to go to renewable energy and energy efficiency. About $20 billion of that or so could put projects on the ground. What do you see as the benefits of that, and what are you telling folks about uh, that money? You know, there's been a lot of money out there all along, and probably the best sign out of the stimulus bill is that uh, the Department of Energy is going to take more seriously its obligation to loan a lot of existing funds they've already had. And there's been a little bit of shifting in the guard of who's responsible for that money. And uh, one of the things we are telling some folks is that they've got a, a much uh, higher chance of getting money loaned to them through what are already existing DOE programs for experimental or other types of programs that can really show a need to get some funds to demonstrate some technology at a better scale to go forward. But other than that, the stimulus bill uh, is putting some money out there, but most of the pieces of success that are needed have already been in place for the renewable energy sector. And it's just the focus of the stimulus bill, as well as the overall political focus on renewable energy, that we're really telling everybody is the, is the message of hope for the renewable energy sector, which can be a message of hope for the whole economy. Let's talk about that focus in the political arena for a minute. There's a lot of talk now that there will be a climate bill and possibly a renewable portfolio standard bill that could be passed this summer. Right. Uh, how big of a how big of a role will that play? Um, you know, the the it depends on where you're at for some of those things. There's renewable portfolio standards already in place in many states, including a lot in the West. So in those states, uh, it actually could have some negative consequences if a national renewable portfolio standard comes along and upsets the apple cart, all the systems that are already in place. But if you were in, say, Alabama or Kentucky, a national renewable portfolio standard bill means there is now a renewable portfolio standard program there, and that's huge. But still, collectively, what that means is a larger market for all of the renewable energy assets, whether those are renewable energy credits or white credits or, or just renewable energy contracts. If there's a national uh, program, that means that there's now a national market for those things, and that allows them all to find the best buyer and the best price. Carbon is going to be also an issue that comes up in yeah. this climate legislation. Will that have an impact on the renewable energy space directly, or is it likely to be more of an indirect effect down the road? No, it has a huge effect. One, because it's given the renewable energy movement uh, much more firm foundation overall. If you compare the 70s and 80s to today, one of the big differences is there is an environmental imprint now on everything that renewable energy stands for that says that renewable energy is not only good for energy independence and maybe cleaner air, but it's actually good for carbon reduction. And so it's a whole other strong motivation uh, secondly, the renewable energy credits themselves are either going to have to fold in carbon credits or they're going to have their own separate existence. And again, a, a renewable energy program, a national program, could really define that. So there's a lot of carbon trading programs and carbon ideas, and this year they're either going to stand alone as their own separate path and entity and a, a stream of income from renewable energy, or they're going to get folded into renewable energy credits, raising those credit prices a little higher. And that is a real tough question that uh, we really don't know where it's going to go. To shift back to the stimulus package for just a second, there there has been the new uh, the new grant program that will be established under that through the Department of the Treasury. How will that change the way you work with uh, companies to to get financing in place? Um, you know, it, it, it's a change in the player in particular. We, we've often been dealing with Department of Energy and in particular the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which has had a large amount of money to give grants to. There's a new player in town and they're pretty focused on getting the money out there and, and funding it. And so I think that's a good thing. But what we are telling them is uh, this new player has some very specific criteria and often that means that you're no longer going to be able to apply and see if you're going to get it. You're going to either know beforehand that you're eligible or you're not, but then you have a good shot at getting some of that money. The financing markets have obviously been upset in the last six months or so. When do you think that that will recover and what are we likely to see as a result of that slowdown in 09? The, I think they already are recovering. Uh, in, in particular, in the renewable energy sector, they didn't take as bad of a hit as many other sectors. And so while uh, all through the winter months and uh, into January, there was a lot of people that were still talking about moving projects forward, they knew something had to clear for those to really go forward. But they didn't slow down their efforts at moving them forward. In projects that still have a good rate of return and, and the right level of return for risk are still very financeable. And, and that's, again, a sign that that any of the upturn we take in the overall financial sector, I think is going to allow the renewable energy sector to explode. 
What are those projects that are still being funded? Is that, are they small, small scale, large scale? What are you seeing day to day? They're large scale projects uh, backed by large companies that can use a little bit of their balance sheet to support them in some cases, but that, uh, that they have good numbers. So they're wind in really good high resource areas. They're geothermal uh, in really good resource areas. They're uh, biomass projects that have a really low feedstock cost and low shipping costs. They're, uh, so they're, they're programs and, and they're assets that were already pretty valuable and pretty financeable. But then there's a lot of middle of the road projects that are still heading towards some potential financial closing this year. And, and there's not really a sense that that can't happen because there is money available. It's just that the money that's available is being used a lot more selectively. And because renewable energy is a focus point, of our economy and a focus point of us politically, it makes those projects very uh, doable. Well, certainly we'll be keeping a close eye on how these markets work out for the rest of the year. Right. John McKenzie, thanks very much for taking the time out to talk to me today. Thanks for your time, Graham. Again, I'm Graham Jessman with RenewableEnergyWorld.com here on the floor in Las Vegas at the Renewable Energy World North America Conference and Expo.